interesting he's there. Now, by 2050, the world's population is likely to hit nearly 10 billion. How will we feed all the people? Well, one possible answer could be to grow meat and animal products in laboratories rather than rearing them on farms. All of that's called cellular agriculture. But ethics aside, can it ever actually be financially viable? Well, you might remember the Dutch scientist Mark Post who unveiled the world's first lab-grown burger. It happened here in London in 2013. It came, though, at a hefty price tag of $330,000. Wow, just for a burger. But it's not just meat. Egg whites can also be made in the lab, too, using yeast. It produces a protein-based mixture, but it doesn't actually involve any animals in the process. Even milk, too. It suggested the uh, technology could revolutionise the food supply chain, making food more efficiently and reduce reducing the impact on the environment. Well, I'm joined by Gian Dioni, who is Chief Development Officer at New Harvest, which is a non-profit organisation that brings together all those working in cellular agriculture. Good Welcome morning. to the programme. And Gian, you may have been watching at the beginning of the show, we, we asked our viewers to get involved in the conversation. And I have to say, just scanning some of the comments we've had, most of them are saying they're quite yeah. up for the idea Great of eating idea. a manufactured, uh, that's not right, I can't the right word, a scientifically made hamburger. Cultured hamburger. <laughs> that's the Just tell us a bit more made. about this process. Yes, so we use cellular agriculture is making any in agricultural product from the cellular level up rather than harvesting that product from an animal, a plant, or synthesizing a petroleum product. And so we're using the technologies that have been advanced in medicine and um, tissue engineering, for instance, to grow hearts or livers. And we're seeing if it can be applied to making food. And we touched on the issue of the growing global population dealing with things like world hunger. This potentially, some way down the line, it has to be said, we're not there yet, but it could help solve some of those problems. Oh, for sure, yes. The um, life cycle analyses, environmental impact assessments that have been done so far, comparing the production of meat made in an animal and meat made in, um, in cultures, in cell cultures, is incomparable. You've got savings of up to 90% in water consumption, in greenhouse gas emissions. Um, it allows vertical farming in cities. From the point of view of the environment, it, it's clear of the, the benefits, but is it financially viable? Because first of all, we're a long way away from the point where we can actually buy one of these burgers. So there's going to be a long road in terms of research development, which has to be funded. And then how will it work in terms of making it financially viable? Can people afford to buy this meat? Well, the first thing is we're a research institute precisely to establish these basic tools so that we then can bring these products closer to market. But first you need basic tools. And so the first computers were prohibitively expensive and progressively with Moore's law, they became less and less expensive. Same thing in aviation. And you need a concerted effort from governments, universities, um, private institutions and foundations and research institutes like ours to start pushing these technologies so that they're developed sufficiently for entrepreneurs to start being able to pick them up. But until and unless universities start to develop specific disciplines where students can start being educated in this field, just like happened with computer sciences once you had computer science departments, you started having experts coming out in this domain. So we've covered the cost that's mm -hmm. falling. We've covered the technology that's improving. It allows you to do it. But there's always going to be that ethical or moral or perception issue that whether people, and, and as Sally said, a lot of people getting in touch saying they're fine with it, they'd be quite up for that, but also some saying, look, this is sort of veering into the genetically modified sort of territory. I don't know where it's quite come from. I'm going to steer clear of it. How do you get public perception on your side? Well, first of all, we exercise this terrible cognitive dissonance to consume meat the way we do today. The vast majority of meat comes from factory farms where the factory is the animal, and animals are are protein factories. Um, there are about 60 billion animals that were grown last year for our consumption. 56 billion of those were chicken. And um, it's, it's an efficient protein factory right now. It's very dangerous. It's a vector of diseases. Uh, it's a reason why we have antibiotic resistance at the scale we do. 
and um, it's not really necessary anymore if we manage to develop these technologies sufficiently that we can take out the animal from this industrialized system. We're not talking about farms, Jersey farms, for instance, mm -hmm. where cows roam. We're really talking about the industrialization of the animal. It's absolutely fascinating, and uh, it's all stuff of, of future years, mm. isn't it? Thank you so much for coming in. Thank really interesting to hear what uh, you are finding out there. We have to move on, though, as ever, and we return 